Tonight, preparing for snow as it is on its way. We have more next, plus new details in the Gage Bethune hearings, and the 101st General Assembly meets for the first time in Springfield. Also, the West Frankfurt School District makes new changes. Those stories and more tonight on News 24 at 10. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday night edition of News 24 at 10. I'm Aaron Price. We begin in Murfreesboro, where new details emerge in the case of a man charged with murdering an SIU student in 2014. Prosecutors planned to drop charges against Gage Bithune today, but postponed their motion for another couple of weeks. Special Prosecutor David Robinson declined to comment about what the information is. He told the judge that he learned of some new information about a half hour before today's hearing and needs some time to digest it. Bethune faces charges in the death of Praveen Varaghese. A jury convicted him in June, but a few months later a judge tossed out the verdict due to an issue with how the indictment was written. Now prosecutors plan to drop charges as they're currently worded. The move would allow them to seek another indictment from a grand jury. Liam Kelly, Bethune's lawyer, said he's not sure why the motion wasn't heard today and didn't want to speculate. Everyone agreed to hold another hearing on Robinson's motion to drop the charges January 23rd. Bethune's lawyer has also filed a motion to have his bond payment refunded. The chief marketing officer for Insomnia Cookies, Tom Carasona, got back to us tonight and issued the following statement. At approximately 9.30 p.m. on January 8, 2019, one of our delivery drivers was involved in an accident with a pedestrian in Carbondale. The entire Insomnia Cookies family would like to extend our thoughts and prayers to the individual involved in the accident and their family. Tuesday night, a car hit a pedestrian on Wall Street in Carbondale. The pedestrian is still recovering. Two people went to the hospital after crashing their car during a police chase today in Pulaski County. Pulaski County Sheriff Randy Kern confirms the crash happened this afternoon on Highway 37 south of Mound City. It happened near the Mound City Water Treatment Plant. The chase started around 3 o'clock p.m. and remains under investigation. The names of those involved in the chase have not yet been released. To the weather where snow is in the forecast, here's Terry with the latest updates.
All right, thanks, Terry. Turning to Springfield tonight, where Wednesday, members of the Illinois House and Senate were sworn in as part of the 101st General Assembly. Many new representatives and senators took the oath for the first time, but a familiar face took the oath again as Speaker of the House. The first item on the agenda after being sworn in was to elect leaders. The House voted to re-elect Mike Madigan as Speaker. Only one Democrat in the House voted no to his 19th term as Speaker. He is the longest-serving Speaker, having held the top position in the House for all but two years since 1983. Representative Patrick Windhorst, the newest lawmaker from our region, didn't support Madigan, but said going forward there will be opportunities to work together to forge what he calls a new path in the right direction. Experts say with the Democrats now having a supermajority, it'll make it easier for them to push through Governor-elect J.B. Pritzker's agenda, including raising the minimum wage and legalizing marijuana for recreational use. Although the majorities are in favor of Democrats, in Southern Illinois, all of our representation in the House and Senate are Republicans. Windhorse was sworn in on Wednesday as the new representative of the 118th District. After discussion last night about hiring a new school resource officer for West Frankfurt School District 168, we got more information and reaction from local leaders today. Police Chief Michael Irwin says the school would pay the city for the officer, but eventually hopes a grant will be able to help the schools. Superintendent Matt Donkin says the school district used to have a resource officer, but eventually the funding ran out. Now the district has the finances to start keeping an officer on duty at the schools. Chief Irwin says within the next few days, he and Duncan will interview current police officers within the city to find the best fit for a resource officer. They hope to have the officer in the schools by next week. Meanwhile, tonight in West Frankfurt, due to the Illinois teacher shortage, some local school districts will already have to start posting job openings for the 2019-2020 school year. With retirements and teachers moving on to other districts, more and more teacher openings become available, but Southern Illinois superintendents say they're having to choose from a smaller candidate pool. The already small pool of candidates gets even smaller when looking for math, science, and specialization teachers. Terry Riker, the Heron Superintendent. Rural areas are getting hit the hardest, causing districts to post job openings earlier and earlier in hopes to secure the best applicants. Instead of posting job openings in the spring to take advantage of graduating students, some districts have posted their openings months in advance. And here's the latest in your national news headlines and your Fox News update. In Fox News. The shutdown impasse continues. I'm Rich Dennison, Fox News. The partial government shutdown will enter its 20th day in just under two hours. A total waste of time. That's the way the president described the third round of the negotiations with congressional leaders aimed at reopening the federal government. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. Well, unfortunately, the president just got up and walked out. Uh, he asked uh, Speaker Pelosi, will you agree to my wall? She said no. 
and he just got up and said that we have nothing to discuss and he just walked down the president will visit mcallen texas to see the u s mexico border first hand and make the case once again for the necessity of building a border wall fox's john decker at the white house the house has approved a bill to fund the treasury department the i r s and other agencies for the next year as part of a democratic strategy to reopen the government on a piecemeal basis eight republicans voted in support of the bill it's unlikely to move forward in the republican controlled senate where majority leader mitch mcconnell has dismissed it as political theater the deputy attorney general is on his way out of the justice department rod rosenstein who for a year and a half oversaw the special counsel's russia probe will leave the justice department in the coming weeks he's expected to stay on until a confirmation hearing is held for william barr set for next week barr is president trump's pick to replace jeff sessions as attorney general a source familiar with the nomination says it was unlikely barr would have accepted if he could not pick his own deputy fox's rachel sutherland in washington Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is reassuring U.S.-backed Kurdish forces in Syria that they will be safe after American troops withdraw from the country. Pompeo making an unannounced stop at Iraq today in an attempt to ease the fears of Arab partners that the U.S. is abandoning the region or walking away from the fight against ISIS. This is Fox News. Stop.
Yeah, I'm getting pumped for that. Thank you very much, Terry, for reporting for us tonight. Turning back to Springfield tonight, where continuing coverage as the 101st General Assembly convenes in the state capitol. Today, the 101st Illinois General Assembly was sworn in, and Democrat John Cullerton was also sworn in as Senate President in Illinois. His party takes charge of the State House and Senate, with the governor's mansion to follow. That change could mean a new era in politics and movement on two controversial topics, the legalization of marijuana and gun control laws. Paul Simon, Public Policy Institute political expert John Jackson. This new political landscape in Illinois will be headed by the newly elected governor, J.B. Pritzker. which can mean action on issues like recreational marijuana. According to a public opinion poll by the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute, two-thirds or 66% of Illinois voters said they favored the legalization of recreational marijuana if it is taxed and regulated like alcohol. SIU senior political science major student Joe Lachar is indifferent to the marijuana laws. However, Larry Lucking of Nashville sees it as a way to save money. Another issue the new legislature could address immediately is licensing for gun shop owners. This was a bill that required it passed in 2018, but then Governor Bruce Rauner vetoed it. Now supporters hope they can take the measure straight to Governor Pritzker for his signature. Looking is not for stricter gun laws. Lajar grew up hunting and having guns in his family, so he does think guns should be accessible just through the right channels. Regardless of how that plays out, Jackson hopes one thing will be accomplished. Governor-elect J.B. Pritzker will be sworn in on Monday, January 14th. Juliana Stratton will be the first black woman to be lieutenant governor in Illinois. Each year, eastern monarch butterflies migrate from southern Canada through the Midwest and East Coast to Mexico, where they hibernate. Richard Little, hardy culture educator for the University of Illinois, said populations are counted during hibernation, and there's been a sharp decrease. Each season, predators take out 15% of the population, but changing weather patterns also play a part. To help increase the population before hibernation, more can be done when eastern monarchs are breeding in areas like southern Illinois, efforts including eliminating or using organic pesticides. Margie Rehagen, manager at Plantscape, said gardeners can also help by growing milkweed. The native plants are the only thing monarch caterpillars eat, and adult monarchs lay their eggs on them. While adult monarchs feed on an array of native plants, Rehagen says these include false indigo, joe pie weed, and the cone flower. A government study found that if conditions continue, there's up to a 57% risk of the eastern migration collapsing within the next 20 years. A group of organizations began a series of meetings back in August to develop plans to create a warming center in Carbondale during the coldest winter months. Those include the Carbondale Interfaith Council, Southern Illinois Coalition for the Homeless, Good Samaritan House, Sparrow Coalition, Carbondale Public Library, Centerstone, Jackson County Health Department, SIU Clinical Center, and the City of Carbondale. The Carbondale City Council put them one step closer at the Tuesday night board meeting in a 5-2 vote in favor of allowing them a zoning certificate which allows them to set up a warming center on city property. Since the need for a warming center is seasonal, it was determined that mobile trailers might be the best option for this initiative. They will be set up. These trailers will be set up on 800 East Main Street. 
The plan is for the warming center to operate 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. as needed depending on the weather. This would be a temporary seasonal facility that would close by April 1st. The center will be, will be professionally staffed by paid employees as well as unpaid volunteers. Carolyn Harvey, a member of the Carbondale City Council, said that some businesses around the 800 East Main Street areas were concerned about increased panhandlers during last night's City Council meeting. Fundraising began back in December, and the group has currently raised almost 80% of its seasonal fundraising goal of $23,000. The coalition put the warming center will be the meeting on Friday to determine when the trailers will be set up. Anyone wanting to help them reach their goal completely can make a donation to the Southern Illinois Coalition for the Homeless at 1009 West Cherry Street, Marion, Illinois, 62959. These stories and more can be found at our website, www.news24si.com. Sports is next. If you've been in a car accident and the insurance company has asked you to sign medical releases, then you need to know your rights before it's too late. I'm attorney Bridget Lawler. Call us now at Lawler & Lawler, 188 R. Lawler.